Hello and welcome to the video. In this video, it's a very quick one to show you some new technology from the guys at Hollybro. Now, for those of you that watch the channel a lot, you'll know I'm a fan of the Hollybro stuff. I originally came across their flight controller and video transmitter setup inside the Coppis One, and that was a great flying ready to fly quadcopter. And I pinched that entire idea for the flight controller and also for the video transmitter and put it inside the Bolt RC build. And I've continued to put an awful lot of Hollybro technology inside things, particularly the video transmitters and the flight controllers. So in this video, I very quickly want to show you what's come. In fact, this one I haven't even had the wrapping off yet just so I can show you what's changed. So it looks like Hollybro are in the middle of updating things. So if you're watching one of those previous videos, this technology is being updated a little bit. So now we're getting F7 based flight controllers and new version of things like the Atlatl. So let's start with the Atlatl HV. This is the V2, uh, 5.8 gigahertz video transmitter designed to sit on top of a stack, but we've put it all over the place in different builds that I've done. It will support 7 to 42 volts and go from kind of a pit mode, which is half a milliwatt, up to 800 milliwatts. But a couple of things have changed on this. So if I just pop this out and I can show you. For those of you that have seen Atlatls before, you'll notice a couple of things straight away. So the things that have really changed on this is that the metal shield has gone over the top, so it's fractionally lighter. If you remember the older ones, I'll try and put an image here, the bottom right hand corner had a, like a big metal can that had a big sticker on it with Hollybro and other bits and pieces on it as well. It's changed the control system. So this has always been able to be controlled from the Betaflight on-screen display. It's changed from Tramp to Smart Audio. Smart Audio is the TBS version. It's really interesting they've done that because we've looked at a few transmitters recently that have been using smart audio. It seems to be becoming more of the choice. I'm fascinated to figure out why that's the case. Max power has been increased to 800 milliwatts from the previous version. Uh, not sure I'm ever going to use that amount, but it's nice to know it's there. And there's also a different layout for the connector at the top, but it's a very similar board to ones that we've already looked at. So that's just more of the same, but better. So the other couple of things that I've got here, let's start with the ones that are open. Uh, there's a new Kakute F7 and an Atlatl V2 stack. So this is their new flight controller. Let me see if I can get this out. The foam on these is really tight. So I tend to push them down. You want to be a little bit careful of that ribbon cable because this has the vibration isolated IMU. So this setup looks very similar. Uh, it has the Atlatl V2 that we've just looked at on the top, comes as part of the bundle. You can also buy the pieces separately. And underneath is the new flight controller. Now this is the Kakute F7. And the specs are that it has a STM32 F7 32-bit processor. Uh, the IMU is SPI connected. It's an ICM2689. A barometer's on here, BMP280. The current sensor in it is about 130 amps, so that should keep most people nice and busy. Six hardware UARTs here now, so more than before. So UARTs 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 7. And all the UARTs support hardware inversion. So things like SBUS, SmartPort, and other inverter protocols will work on the, any UART, which is great. So it doesn't mean that you have to be really careful in trying to figure out which UARTs will work with which particular piece. There's a TF card at the bottom for SD card logging. Dimensions are 34 by 41 by 7 millimeters, and the weight of the flight controller on its own is about 9 grams. Now, as usual, the Hollybro manuals are nice. Uh, there is this slight piece sticking out the back, so rather than being a completely standard size, unusually there's this detent kind of in the this side here but this side is stuck out the back. So you have to be a little bit careful, be aware of that if you're going to install it in anything. In addition to the new flight controller, they've also brought out another new ESC. Uh, this looks like something out of an Egyptian tomb, but this is actually their new 4-in-1 ESC. So this is the new Teco 4-in-1 35 amp ESC. You kind of see that all the MOSFETs are underneath. That's kind of a uh, heat dissipation 
uh, thing stuck on the top. The way it works is that the flight controller sits on top of it and inside here there are little spaces, those little black things there that look like partially cut out bolts. Um, and the idea is, is they go on the top of each of these holes to make it flat so that then you can put the flight controller on the top. Now there's a port here on the side so that you have all the connections and then there's a port on the flight controller. There it is. So it actually goes together like that. That being the front of the model. So the power connection is going to come out the side and all of the connections for the individual motors so motor four, two, one, and three are actually here on the pads. Nice chunky pads. And once you've got those little spaces on, this top bit fixes on beautifully. Now let me grab a ruler because everyone will ask me how tall it is. Uh, it is 25 millimeters from the lowest part of the four in, 35 amp four in one ESC to the top of the most proud part on the new Hollybro Atlatl HV. So that's one new system. So there's an awful lot of choice now coming out. Uh, that is a bloody beef. It's actually quite heavy. I mean, this will support three to six S LiPo, uh, 35 continuous current, whopping 50 amp burst. Uh, weight is about 17 grams. So there's an awful lot of stuff in there to make sure that it can handle the current. And the other two pieces that I have is uh, the individual BL Heli ESCs, the latest ones, and also the Kakute F7 Atlatl V2 all-in-one stack. So let's start with this. So it looks very similar to the other one, but this time the bottom board is an awful lot bigger because it also is the power distribution board and has all the connections out as well. So we have the power inputs, the individual outputs and connections for each of the ESCs that you'd have out on the arms. Now again, this is the same processor, the same barometer, same IMU as the other board, same number of six UARTs, uh, 120 amp maximum continuous current. I think it's got two ounce copy in here. Has the SCL and SDA I squared C pads easily accessible so you can put things like an external compass and magnetometer on it. So it's a different option rather than have the flight controller, you could choose this version and have everything connected on it, which is good. So of course then we need to have the BL Heli ESCs, the individual ones. So these are the Teco 32, uh, I think these are the 35 amp still ESCs. Now I've used these on a couple of builds and they seem pretty bulletproof, if you'll pardon the pun. So these would be a good companion for a central board like this where you want to connect the battery and everything onto the flight controller directly. This one's obviously a little bit shorter. Let me just do that height thing again. So this one is about, it is 20 millimeters from top to bottom, even with the supplied standoffs. And so that would be a much lower profile build. And this time you could put the ESCs out on the arms. So the spec on these things, two to six S, 35 amp continuous current, slightly higher burst current. It also supports D-Shot 1200. BL Heli 32 and also has the inbuilt current sensor. So this thing, although it has three pads, uh, you'll remember this from the build that I did. Uh, we actually did the telemetry as well. So rather than being a positive ground and signal wire for these three pads at the end, it's actually the ground and signal wire and the BL Heli telemetry bits and pieces back as well. So you can also get all the information on your on-screen display and into your black box about what the ESCs are actually doing. So hopefully that's interesting for those of you that have seen all this stuff come out. Now you've actually seen it in the flesh, so to speak. And I'll put these to one side for the next build where I can use them. If you found that video useful or like the content, then please hit the like and subscribe button down below. If you want to go the extra step, you can become a Patreon of the Painless 360 channel and help provide support for what I do here. All the videos created here are put into playlists, so if you're interested in a particular topic, have a look at the playlist, and they all are organised in there to make them easier to use. If you're not sure if there's a video for your particular problem or topic you want to know more about, then add Painless360 to the Google search term that you're interested in, and that should find the video, article, or content about the particular thing that you're interested in having a look at.